Good evening. Ira Epstein, and here we are on Thursday, the 13th of July, 2026. And, you know, right now, I'll give you even the time I normally don't. It's about 6.45 p.m. Central Time. Uh, the reason I don't on this is the futures are open, but we won't open in these markets until uh, New York time. You know, it's going to be uh, 9.30, 8.30 Chicago time. So quite a ways to go. So let's talk and rehash what went on this week because it's so important. Jobs data was the big report. Then that was followed up by the CPI report. That's followed up by today's PPI. All the reports show a slowdown. Now, even in the jobs, you're seeing some slowdown. Today we had initial claims. They picked up. <laughs> well, let me say that right. They were less. They dropped, which means labor is still very strong. Now, where they picked up was the continuing. You get one down here, one up there, but they, they're ratcheting back and forth, and you're not going anywhere big on it. PPI was only up a tenth. Now, if it goes negative, people say it's deflationary. Then we saw the CPI numbers, and you just hone in on the core. I don't care what the headline does. It's the core that the Fed watches. It fell a half a point. And then we go to the jobs data and we're not getting the amount of jobs. Remember, nobody's talking about it. Do you remember the 497,000 number from ADP? I'm still waiting to see what they show on their next report so we get a feel. We had nothing like that on the uh, regular jobs. And had that 497 not come out, I don't know that we would have looked at the jobs report quite the way we did. I was thinking about that recently. They set us up with that number going, we're going to get a monster and we didn't get it, nothing like it. That set you back. So the market is making up its mind. Again, it's done it, past tense that the Fed, even if they go one hike, they're wrong in doing it, number one. Number two, if they do it, it's one and done. And all they need to do is show that uh, inflation keeps falling with the July and the August numbers. And then by the time you get to the September FOMC, it's a fait accompli. They'll be doing nothing, pausing, and then everybody will go, when are they going to cut? Are they going to do it before the end of the year? Is this coming for our Christmas present? You'll hear that talk. Is the Fed going to give you a Christmas present with a cut? I know you don't believe me in July saying that. You remember that I said it. All right. Now, keep your fingers crossed for how the movies do this week, because AMC is uh, definitely waiting on that. You know, one of the markets that didn't go with this whole rally, it stalled the past three days. What do you think? Hyatt. Could be because he's the governor of this state. Could be. There's a lot of us that aren't a fan of his. Uh, we look at how this market is going right here, and it's just sort of drifting. But in all fairness, okay, this is still the highest area the market's been. It's been here, here, and here. So you're getting in, into an era, area that the market's having a lot of troubles continuing on from. The pattern has been one of higher lows and higher highs. Now, if you take out 118.53, you will suddenly have a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. You'd be over the 18-day average, so a potential target, the word is potential, might be that the market wants to go back and revisit that and the 100-day. Something else occurred. If we take back and we look at each other, notice how the red was under the green. This was yesterday. Today, you had a bullish crossover. Now, if it crosses back under with a down tomorrow, you're just waddling back and forth. But if it stays over it, in theory, my theory at least, is the market makes a run for the most recent high. I'm questioning if it's got that power because these numbers are just waffling back and forth. You get a good break tomorrow, probably not. Where's the market stalled? If you haven't taken my enhanced Bollinger Band course, shame on you at this point in time. Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within 95% of the time. They expand, they contract, you pay attention. But when you tie them together with momentum, you open up a whole new era, which is not what the developer of this taught. I teach that. And my slow stochastics are not too traditional. They are the ones that I teach diff to use different. My paid subscribers, I will give them the formula. And boom, you make the change and all of a sudden they look just like mine. 
And I like the delay mine have, all right? It's a bit different. They're smoother in my opinion. And what I see here is a market that is overbought, hit the profit objectives for many traders. At the same time, they're probably taking money off the table. Rivian, how long before a correction sets in? That's the only question that you have to ask. You have an embedded reading. What does that mean? It means the first break in the market to a key moving average is what this market will be bought at. Whether it stays up there, if you lose the red line under 79, you'll get into more of a correction, and then 2062 becomes a potential target. Still, you've got to know how to play it. I teach it in my enhanced Bollinger Band course. You are not yet embedded. You need another day and we might embed here. Now, this is called a Gorilla Glue trade. And the reason is you go up, you hit the Bollinger Band, and you might go either side of it, but you basically stay under it by the close and it just keeps pushing the band higher. It is a sign of strength. It often results in this number embedding and then off the corrections, traders start buying again. That's at least the, the theories I have. Just plain overbought in the uh, financial select. Could it embed? Well, watch. Both numbers are over 80. They were both over 80 yesterday. What about the day before? No. So Friday is going to be a very important day. If I get that third day, then I go in on Monday and I'm suddenly all over the market looking for potential buys as long as the slow stochastics stay embedded. I'm already there in XLI. So in the morning tomorrow, if you're one of my subscribers, the odds are I'm going to be having a lot of potential buy signs. The stops will be if you lose the embedded reading and the targets are even higher. NVIDIA. It's already over the upper Bollinger Band. It has narrowed in dramatically here. This could be on a breakout. How would I know if it's a breakout? Let me explain that one. To me, the breakout would occur because you closed on the top of the range, the highest that you've been recently, in the top quadrant. I need another day where you make a higher high and close higher on the day than today in the top quadrant. And then I would say, until you get back under this low, you've got to break out to the upside and away you go. I'm thrilled because my subscribers know that this is the numbers that the, they're in at and we're, we're looking at the market. Socks getting carried along with NVIDIA, but different, not embedded, nor is NVIDIA. Over the upper band, could it be the same pattern? It could. We'll wait and see. What I don't see though, I got a higher high and lower and low. So it's not quite the same type of pattern. In XHB, so we're at a zone where the market's latched onto the Bollinger Band. If it uh, does it again tomorrow, then it becomes that Gorilla Glue trade. And that could just carry the market higher, especially if we get an embedded reading. Tomorrow is gonna be a crucial day on chart after chart that I watch. A big day, probably the biggest, for me, probably the biggest in two months, maybe three. So um, I'll be all over these markets now. Overbought, upper Bollinger Band. Nah, I don't want to see it there. Energy, no, I'll let somebody else want to own it. First challenge of the 200-day average. Now, you, you went right through the 100. I was surprised at that in the Bollinger Band. But now you got two arguments against the market. You're just plain overbought. I'll let other people want to own that. Then we get to the gold market. Again, overbought, first move to the Bollinger Band. I think the smart money's taking money off the table. Bye-bye with the gold hand. Silver, same thing. And I know you'll say, Ira, you are so wrong, and you should. Everything's going, you're going to be left behind. I don't want to tell you with this gray hair that I have how many times I've been told that, but I'm still here. And there's always another train, bus, there's a schedule, that's the word. I'll have my opportunity on my terms. I know why these markets moved. I elected, and part of how I teach is to not take on risk where you don't have to. Nobody knew what the jobs report was going to say. It was a big surprise positive to the market. Nobody knew the CPI, the core number, was going to fall half a percentage point. Not one analyst got it right. Go out and read. You, you will see what I'm saying. So you're getting to the point now where those little surprises are now entrenched in the market. And the market's saying, we're in a different part. But we have been rallying. We're not coming from a bottom on these markets. We're coming from a higher level on all of them. 
Will the earnings reports that start tomorrow with the banks and then move on do any good? Certain analysts have been predicting forever that the earnings are gonna come in terrible. I don't think the banks set the tone for everything, but it's gonna be important. The market will look at it. Pepsi did fabulous today if you were looking at their numbers. So we will see what goes on. In the copper, you have gone from the lower band to the upper band. Vertical move. I mean, to catch this move, you just had to be a buyer. You didn't care. You were just blind buying. I like, I like COPX. Okay. BND, end of a bear run. Complete end. This got now high enough. I don't care what it does. Yeah, there'll be corrections along the way. It doesn't matter. The end of a bear run. And I have been telling you, I don't think you want to be short. I, I think that you've come to the end of the uh, two-year gaining crazy, the five-year and the 30. Be careful. This is what I think, at least. That gets me bearish the dollar. I stood here in front of you this week when the market was up here. I'm going, I am bearish. I know that the chart action's not quite there yet. Fundamentally, I am, and I used the term, I said, you got to be a Jekyll and Hyde. One part of me, the fundamental, I am bearish as can be for these reasons. As a technician, I'm not ready to be short. It's hard, but you have to do that. And boom, the market's doing what I thought. Obviously, the mirror image of this is FXE, both over or under the Bollinger Bands. I wouldn't have you chase that. So you look at it, you see what's going on, it gets interesting. So what do I think is going to happen? I think Friday especially tomorrow, it's going to be a big day for profit taking, new money, the end of a week, what's the weekly chart going to look like? All this comes into play. Tomorrow's crucial. I'll be looking, I can tell you this already, at pivot points. What pivot points do is, you, by the way, they're probably in your charting software. It Via a special formula, it's right through here. I had a client that became one of the biggest advisors in commodities and used to trade through my firm in the 70s and 80s. And he wrote a book how I turned uh, 10,000 or whatever it is into a million. And he actually did something like that in my firm. He had clients that were making a killing. He didn't write the book how I turn a million into another number. Got it? They never do. But he was using this, and I didn't know anything about it, and I got taught it and couldn't quite figure it out for years, and then I finally figured it out. And then I discovered that one of the key elements that it was missing, and I think he had, it was momentum. And once I tied them together, away it went. I'm not going to use his name, period, all right? But when, when you look at this as to how it's gone here, I look at this and I go, okay, maybe you should at least take a look at it. So I created a free series. It's three videos. I show you how to do it. How, you've got the charting software, most likely. You won't have my version of Slow Stochastics, but you'll get the concept. And then you can talk with us. So go to irapstein.com under free offers. You'll see it there. Move your cursor up here. Give it a try. You got a weekend coming up. It's three videos. You're going to get a real fast education, and I think I'll open your eyes up to what I teach and how I go about it. You have a great day. I'll see you all tomorrow.